Hello and welcome to the California Water Update for February 2024. I usually call these drought updates, but that is definitely not the case today. Much of the state was hit by yet another atmospheric river recently, making this the third major rain event to hit California in the month of February. Thankfully, this recent storm does not appear to be as damaging as the first two, but how has it impacted California's water situation? You're about to find out. You know what to do. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. We have a lot to cover this week, so I'll keep each topic brief so we can get through this quickly. In this week's episode, we'll take a look at Trinity Lake. While almost every other reservoir in California was able to take advantage of last year's record snowpack and recover from low water levels, Trinity Lake was left out of that recovery. But after all the recent storms, how is Trinity looking today? Next, we'll check out that new lake in Death Valley. These temporary lakes usually only stick around for a few weeks, but this new lake, it's different. Is it here to stay? After that, we'll take a look at the snowpack situation. After a very slow start to the winter season, the snowpack is finally starting to recover. The numbers in the latest report may just surprise you. The water elevation at Trinity Lake is currently 2,322 feet, 10 inches above mean sea level. That's an increase of nearly 38 feet or 457,000 acre feet so far this year. The current water level is 178 feet above minimum power pool and 47 feet below full pool. The 2023 water year saw most of California's reservoirs fully recover after three years of intense drought. This was thanks to record-setting snowpack that eventually melted and the resulting runoff streamed into rivers, eventually filling the reservoirs. Back on July 6, 2023, California's largest reservoir, Lake Shasta, was at 93% of capacity. The second largest reservoir in California, Lake Oroville, was at 99%. But the third largest reservoir, Trinity Lake, was struggling at just 58% of capacity. These low water levels left many business owners who rely on the lake suffering. At that time, locals complained that too much water was being released from Trinity Dam. But according to the Bureau of Reclamation, releases from Trinity were by the book. There were no additional releases due to the ongoing maintenance at the dam. The thing is, even though Lake Shasta is less than 30 miles away from Trinity, they have completely different hydrological and meteorological conditions. So while last winter's snowpack was enough to refill Shasta, the snow in, in the Trinity Alps, the mountains above Trinity Lake, were nowhere near as good. Also, the watershed for Trinity Lake is tiny compared to Shasta and Oroville. There is just less area for Trinity Lake to collect water from compared to the other large reservoirs. Today, however, things have changed, and Trinity Lake is looking much better. This is a chart of the 2024 water year, which began on October 1st, 2023. So far this water year, the reservoir has risen 40 feet. I mean, that water line is almost vertical. Trinity Lake is now, thankfully, over 71% of full pool capacity. And the snowpack in the Trinity Alps is looking better this year as well. Out of the four monitoring stations that are reporting data, two have reported already snowpack levels that are exceeding 100% of the April 1st average peak. We'll get more into the snowpack a little later, but for now, let's head down to Death Valley. Death Valley is known as one of the hottest and driest places on Earth. In a typical year, the valley receives just 2.36 inches of water. However, last August, when Hurricane Hillary hit California, it dumped an unprecedented amount of water in Death Valley, causing extensive flooding and transforming the typically parched landscape. The intense rainfall was so significant that it led to the formation of a temporary lake. Death Valley's Badwater Basin is the lowest point in North America, at about 282 feet below sea level. It's in this area that these temporary or ephemeral lakes form from time to time. But these lakes never last very long. They typically evaporate quickly due to the valley's high temperature and, and intense sun. This latest occurrence of a lake in Death Valley is different. It has already been around for over six months and continues to be recharged by the recent rain events. 
In the past six months, Death Valley has received more than double its annual rainfall amount, recording more than five inches of rain compared to the two inches it normally receives in an entire year. Experts predict the lake will stick around until April and even May, and forecasters are predicting more rain in March, so the lake could last even longer. California has witnessed a dramatic turnaround in its battle against drought, so let's briefly go over our latest drought monitor report. This is a map of the current drought situation in California. As you can see, the entire state is currently drought-free. Only 7% of the state is in the abnormally dry category, and much of that is up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, with a little patch in the extreme southeast of the state near Lake Havasu. This situation is a turnaround from just a year ago when 85% of California was in various stages of drought, including over 32% in severe to exceptional drought conditions. This is a welcome change after years of drought and reservoirs with low water levels. At the start of the year, the California snowpack sat at just 25% of average. But after the recent series of storms, the Sierra is glittering white. Over the last week, storms have added up to four feet of snow to the region. Today, the snowpack in the upper Sierra Trinity region is at 98% of normal and 80% of the April 1st average. We use the April 1st average because that is typically when the snowpack is at its peak in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Before the temperatures rise, the snow melts, and the resulting runoff refills our reservoirs. Heading south, the central Sierra region has a bit of catching up to do, with the snowpack at 81% of normal and 67% of the April 1st average. And in the southern Sierra region, the numbers are still lower, at 78% of normal and 65% of the April 1st average. So the snowpack in the Sierra Mountains is looking better, but there was still some work to do to get to the April 1st average. Now let's include the other areas, such as the Cascade and Klamath regions, to give us a broader perspective. Statewide, the snowpack is currently at 85% of normal and 70% of the April 1st average. All of the large rain events in February, and potentially more in March, put California in a good position to have an average water year. This is excellent news after three years of severe drought, followed by one of the wettest years on record. Vice Director of Watershed Sciences at UC Davis recently stated, Overall, I am not worried about drought for the rest of the year. We have a fairly good snowpack right now. Not great, but it's not unusually dry. And even if it were to get dry, we're coming into it with a full set of reservoirs. Man, I love to hear statements like that. Hey, that's it for this week's episode. I'm very happy that it was a positive report for a change. Let's hope it stays that way. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.